All right, chemistry, uh, this is part two of your video lecture for chapter seven, section one. Uh, last time, last lecture, we took care of these first three objectives. Now we're going to look at the fourth and fifth. Using prefixes, name a binary molecular compound from its formula. So if I give you formula, you can tell that it is covalently bonded. That's a molecular compound. You're going to use a prefix system. And then lastly, write the formula for a binary molecular compound given its name. Again, molecular is covalently bonded. Those are two nonmetals. Binary just meaning there's two of them. They have two things bonded together. All right, let's get started. Let's fast forward to where we left off. All right, binary molecular compounds. Uh, for this course, molecular compounds consist of two nonmetals. Okay, there are some exceptions, some other things going on. But for our purposes, it's two nonmetals. Uh, and for also our purposes, hydrogen will be considered a nonmetal. Okay, it's a nonmetal most of the time. Uh, it actually can act like a metal sometimes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that during oxidation numbers, but it won't be a very big part of this course at all. Uh, so most of the time, it's a, it's a nonmetal. Now, the ratio of elements is not determined by their individual ionic charges. Remember, when we have covalent bond, there is no transfer of electrons, so there's no ions in the first place. So there are no ionic charges. For example, if we have CO and CO2, uh, when we were considering ionic compounds, we had to worry about, oh, what was the charge of the, of the anion? What's, what's the charge of the cation? Do, are, they, are they equal and opposite in magnitude? Here, we're not worried about that. Okay, um, that doesn't come into play. There, these are not electrostatic charges uh, due to, sorry, electrostatic forces due to charges of ions. Uh, we're simply trying to satisfy uh, the octet rule and gain full valence shells by sharing electrons. So we can have situations like CO2, carbon monoxide, and C uh, um, yeah, CO and CO2, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or water and then hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O, H2O2. Again, if we were dealing with uh, ions, charges, that wouldn't be possible. So when it comes to naming, uh, we have uh, a couple rules. This is, the, this is the prefix system here. So first off, write the name of the first element of the formula. Okay, first element. <coughs> now you are going to pick the least electronegative atom, and that's going to be the one you list first. Another way to say this, you might see this written some other places, the most metallic. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's the same thing. If you're looking for the least electronegative element, that's the most metallic. So when we look at the periodic table, using our uh, periodic trends for electronegativity, we see that electronegativity increases as we go up and to the right. So that lets us know that phosphorus here is the more metallic or the least electronegative element. Uh, we are then we write the name of the second element, okay, and we're going to do that IDE thing. Okay, the IDE thing. We're still going to drop the last syllable and add IDE, so oxygen turns into oxide. And we're going to use numerical prefixes to show the number of atoms of each. So we had phosphorus and oxygen. Again, I, I dropped the last syllable for an ID, uh, IDE, so phosphorus, oxide. But I had to communicate to you how many of each of these atoms are present. Like, well, why didn't we do that with ionic bonding? Well, because you already know the charges of those ions. And since we know for sure, for a fact, that an ionic compound has to be overall neutrally charged, we can deduce how many of them are present. But because we don't have those charges to work with for molecular compounds, we have to tell you um, how many atoms are present. So <coughs> since there are two phosphorus atoms, it's diphosphorus. Since there are five oxygen atoms, it's pentoxide. Okay, we're going to be using uh, these numerical prefixes, and these are the ones that we are going to use. We're not going to go any higher than this. Uh, yes, prefixes for numbers higher than this do exist. We're just not going to use them in this course. So mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. <coughs> so, for example, P4O10. We have the tetra, meaning four, because there are four phosphorus atoms. Uh, we have the deca for the 10, for the oxide. So that becomes tetra phosphorus deca oxide. We have carbon. Uh, on, the first on the first element, I'll, I'll 
throw this out there. Uh, if there's only one of them, you don't say mono on the first one. Okay, that's the only time you don't say it. Uh, but we have one oxide, so carbon monoxide. Again, we only have one carbon, so we just don't say the, the mono. So we say carbon dioxide, because there are two oxygens here. Again, tetra, phosphorus, decoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. <coughs> now, when it comes to picking which element comes first, let's look at that specifically. The element in the smaller group number is usually given first. That's the same thing as saying further to the left in the periodic table, which is the same thing as saying the lower electronegativity, which is also the same thing as saying the more metallic. So this is, these are multiple ways of saying the exact same thing. The element with the smaller group number is usually given first. If both elements are in the same group, the element with the larger period number is given first. Again, can you see that we are following the trend for electronegativity here? Uh, this element is <coughs> given a prefix only if it contributes more than one atom to the molecule of the compound. Again, we wouldn't say a mono in front of the first element if there's only one. Number two. Uh, the second element is named by combining a prefix for the number of atoms of the element in the compound and the root uh, of the name uh, of the element and then the suffix IDE. Uh, you might have noticed, <coughs> uh, like for carbon monoxide or pentoxide, the O or the A at the end of the prefix is usually dropped when the word following the prefix begins with another vowel. Okay, we don't say pentaoxide. We drop the A from the penta and we just say pentoxide. Now, that's not going to be a major point of contention. I'm not going to put uh, different versions of the correct answer that do or don't drop the A. That's not one of the things I'm going to be testing you on. Okay, um, but that, that is the case if you were wondering about that. Um, now, when we go to write the formula, write the formula for the first element in the compound name followed by the numerical subscript that shows how many there are. If there's no numerical prefix uh, and there's one atom of the element. Okay, so carbon dioxide. <coughs> uh, since there's no, pr uh, no subscript uh, on that C, there's only one carbon. Uh, in, in the name, since there's no prefix, there's no di or tri or, or tetra, it's just one carbon. Two, write the formula for the second element in the compound name followed by a subscript that shows how many atoms of the element are designated by the numerical prefix in that name. Again, exact same idea. However, this time, if there is only one, we are going to write mono. All right, some practices here. Go ahead and press pause and see if you can write uh, names for these first three and you can write formulas for these second three. Go ahead and press pause now. All right, let's see how we did. First off, we have sulfur trioxide. Second up, we have iodine trichloride. Next up, we have phosphorus pentabromide. And on to the uh, formulas. Okay, we have carbon with four iodines. That's Ci4. We got phosphorus with three chlorines. PCl3. And then two nitrogens and three oxygens. That's N2O3. All right, and we are going to go over some stuff for acids. Okay, we are going to go over some stuff for acids. Acids and bases are pretty important later on in chemistry, so we do want to be aware that there is a naming system for those. Now, an acid is a compound that gives off s uh, that gives off uh, hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. Okay, that's one of the definitions of an acid, and we're going to look at that right now. So, if they're going to give off give off hydrogen atoms, you got to have hydrogen in them. There will always be some hydrogen. Okay, there might be one, might be two, might be three, next to some anion. Okay, the, the, the anion is going to have a high variety, but it's the fact that that anion can give off oxy or oxygen, hydrogens that makes it an acid. Now, the name of that acid is going to be determined by the, that anion, right? Because they're all going to have hydrogens there. That's what makes them an acid. So it's the anion that's going to uh, determine the name. So let's get into the names. If the anion that's attached to the hydrogen ends in IDE, Okay, like a chloride. What we do is we put the prefix hydro, okay, before the name, prefix hydro, and we change that IDE at the end to ic acid. Okay, so if we look at something like HCl, we have a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion, okay, so that, an that an anion ends in IDE. We are going to put hydro before it, and we're going to put ic acid at the end, so it becomes hydrochloric acid. 
we have uh, two hydrogens uh, with a sulfide ion, so that becomes hydrosulfuric acid. All right, if the oxygen, or sorry, if the anion has oxygen in it, okay, that's an oxy anion, if you remember from last lecture, <coughs> it's going to end in eight or ite. Okay, so if the if the anion has oxygen, you're going to see an eight or an ite. What we're going to do is we're going to change that. We're going to change an eight ate to ic acid. Okay, so we have um, a nitrate here, NO3. We have a nitrate bottom to hydrogen. So hydrogen nitrate is nitric acid. Now, if it's not an ATE but an ITE, okay, that refers to fewer oxygens in that um, in the in the anion. We're going to change it to us acid. Okay, O U S. So this is a nitrite. Okay, NO2. Okay, there's fewer oxygens, so that's why it has an ITE. We have hydrogen nitrite. It's nitrous acid. If you've ever heard those two things, nitric versus nitrous, okay, that it refers to a different number of oxygens on that anion. So let's practice a little bit right here. We got one, two, three, four, five, and six practices. So go ahead and practice writing down names for these. Moving on. Now, when you write your formula for uh, an acid, hydrogen will always be first. Always be first. Always list hydrogen first. The name will tell you what the anion is. Remember, the name will make the charges cancel out. Okay, so if the anion is a, is a minus two, you need to have two hydrogens. If the anion is a minus one, you only need one hydrogen. On and on and on. <coughs> if it starts with a hydro, that means there's no oxygen. And there's an IDE. Um, if there's no hydrogen, um, the ATE becomes uh, ic, ite becomes us. All right, so this this is really the, this is the entire system for naming acids. When you practice your acids, have this this page open. It'll help you out. All right, last let's end with a few more practices here. Now for this for this set of practices, you want to have your polyatomic ion sheet out because you need to know what um, an acetate polyatomic ion is or um, well, that's pretty much the only one there. But get your polyatomic ion sheet out and then go ahead and practice these up. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, video lecture. I will see you next period.